All right, guys, I'm back. I'm sorry. I don't know how to turn chat on. <laughs> so, I guess that's the way it is. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to turn chat on while we're still going. I think there's about an hour and 55 minutes left. Figure out how to turn the chat on without shutting off the live stream. Well, anyway, at least I'm printing something.
see how it's doing. Well, like I said, I have to check it once now. It looks like it's turning now. Printing away and we'll have a nice green lure. Probably gonna paint the bottom yellow. Now we can talk a little bit about lure design here while this is printing. Uh, one thing you want with most of these lures is you want it to sit with its back end just tilt it a little bit in the water. That way it gives the fish a, a better chance to to hit the um, to hit the hooks. Now this has two BBs for the weights and uh, one BB for the rattle. There's a little chamber on the inside. You'll see it when you're done where the rattles are supposed to go into tiny little chambers and they're all on the bottom. You want the center of gravity kind of low so that it sits in the, in the water. I've had really good luck with 3D printed lures. There was only one lure I made that didn't really work out and it, I'm not sure if it was, it wasn't a lure that I designed. It was somebody else's lure. 
and I just assumed it worked, and I went through the trouble of painting it really detailed, only to find out the lure just didn't really work at all. And, and that's when I decided that, yeah, I should probably test the lure before I go through the trouble of painting it. I just assumed that other people's designs on Thingiverse were good, but there are designs out there that don't work, whether it be a lure or something, something else, or they don't work how you think they're going to work. So you got to check those things before you spend a lot of time painting something. I'm still trying to figure out the, uh, the chat function, which I can't seem to quite figure out. I'm playing with my YouTube channel on my PC while this is uh, while this is printing, and it's, the video is not showing up. the resident computer be Chat works. Nice. My wife is smarter than I am when it comes to computers. I would just hand her and say, please make it do this. chat is working. If you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them.
first got this print, I was absolutely, and I, I ran a sample, uh, I was just astounded at uh, the different things you could make with this and, and how many free files are online. And like I said before, I did post this file on Thingiverse. So if you want to make your own lure, feel free. And if you do, it would be great if you posted a picture of your lure and anything you caught with it. I'm kind of a lure addict. I have hundreds of them, and here I am making another one. I, sh I should really make more lures than I do. Uh, I'm trying to get a wood shop going a little bit so I can make some bigger lures uh, to go after pike and muskie. The pike and muskie lures are just insanely priced. And uh, I, I can print fairly large with my other printer. It's uh, 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, I think. But uh, if you know anything, if you don't know anything about pike and muskie, they can get very large, and they have very, very sharp teeth. And I'm guessing one hit from a muskie or a pike on a 3D printed lure would most likely just crush the lure. Now I have experimented a little bit with coating these lures with epoxy and I had mixed results and I think uh, one of the problems I had was is I used five minute epoxy and that sets up too quickly. You can't get a nice smooth uh, layer on the lure. You also have to rotate the lure. I I'm actually working on building a, a lure rotator right now. And the reason is you rotate the lure is to keep the epoxy from dripping. If you get a nice even coat on there and then you rotate the lure, uh, the lure does not have a chance to drip. But I finally figured out that five minute epoxy is, is just too, it sets up too quickly. Now, uh, this original lure I made uh, is not coated um, with anything at all. I just made it and super glued it together. I super glued in the, the stainless steel cotter pants and I put split things on it. Um, I did sand it a little bit. I, I don't care about lines. A lot of a lot of people complain, question the um, the lines because this is this is not plastic mold injecting. You, you, you're never going to get plastic mold injection quality out of out of a 3D printer like this, you're always going to see the lines. The fish can't see the lines, they don't care. So it doesn't really matter that uh... <laughs> read your tiny Bible. No, you go read your tiny Bible. <laughs> you tell me what it says. That's my son. He's he's joking around. He's probably upstairs watching. But anyway, like I was saying, uh, you, if you look at the print really close, it's, it's hard to tell in the camera. But you can see the lines, and, and the fish don't care. They're, they're not going to care. Um, I like to use, as far as other lures I use, I, I really heavily favor uh, Ozark Trail and Cotton Cordell. They're very inexpensive lures. Since we're, we're printing a, a lure, we can talk a little bit about fishing because I'm, I'm always up for talking about fishing. I'm, I'm, I'm quite the fishing addict. And I have had a lot of people ask me, what do you use to catch fish? And I mostly use the cheaper lures. Uh, Cotton Cordell's and Ozark Trail, of course, can be bought at Walmart. Um, they're good lures. Uh, I've, I've watched videos on cheap lures versus expensive lures, and, and, and the one guy that posted the video, I don't buy it. He said that the uh, uh, more expensive lure was better. Well, let me tell you which, which lure is the best lure. The best lure to use is the one that the fish are gonna hitch. You could, you could have the most expensive lure out there, and if that's not the color the fish want, or it's not the type of lure the fish want, you're never gonna catch anything. And, and because the lures are 
because the cotton cordon lures and the Ozark trail lures are so expensive, that makes it easy to purchase quite a few of them. They like said the the, the the muskie and the pike lures, the bigger lures, the, the five to like eight ounce. I, I can throw up to a ten ounce lure. I, I think the biggest lure I have is seven and a half ounces. It's 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 a rubber lure. It's it's heavy. Um, but, but they can run 50, 60 bucks. You know, uh, that's kind of the exception. That's that's the only time I'll I'll spend uh, more money on a lure other than a couple bucks. My my limit is around five dollars, and, and that's one of the other reasons why I like to make them. But the other reason uh, I was going to talk about as far as uh, uh, making my own lures. I have a couple ponds down the street uh, that I like to fish at. In fact, in the summertime, uh, when the sun goes down late, I go almost every day after work. Uh, it's really relaxing. Uh, it, if, if you don't have a hobby, find one because it, it helps you mentally. But anyway, these ponds are, are heavily pressured. Uh, a lot of people fish them. Uh, and a lot of people use uh, plastic, soft baits. Uh, they use flukes, they use paddle tails, they use... Uh, there's a, a dozens of different varieties of, of plastic worms out there that you can use. Um, and, and because the ponds are heavily pressured, I like to come up with stuff from my imagination. Uh, that way it's something the fish haven't seen. Anything to kind of give me an edge, you know, because because I don't I don't really have to worry about someone in my neighborhood printing this lure and using it at my pond. It, honestly, if if I did see someone using one of my lures at the pond, I'd, I'd be thrilled in, in a certain sort of way. I'd be like, well, okay, time to make up something else. But if you're making your own lures, they're coming from your own imagination, and uh, it's something the fish haven't seen. And, and they're going to react in, in either one or two ways. They're either going to ignore it because it's something they haven't seen and they're scared of it or they're suspicious of it, or they're going to go crazy on it because they haven't seen it. You know? This this lure, this white one, did pretty good. Uh, the top water bite in the ponds that I, I frequent, it, it wasn't for very long this year for some reason. It wasn't very long. But, but getting back to the, the cheap lures and why I buy cheap lures is... Uh, there's another brand of lure I like to buy. It's, it's at uh, uh, it's at um, uh, Bass Pro Shop, and there's there's usually a table uh, in, in the back of Bass Pro Shop where they have cheap two and three dollar lures, and, and I've purchased literally almost every single one of them, and, and I have caught. Uh, multiple species off of them and some pretty dang big fish. Uh, I caught uh, a six pound bass uh, out of a pond uh, on a lure that cost less than two bucks. Um, a lot of people think that just because they're cheap they're not going to catch anything. A lot of people think because their, their favorite celebrity fisherman doesn't use it, it's not going to work. Uh, I beg to differ, and I have the pictures to show for you. So it's printing away. It looks like it's got about an hour left. Now, because I'm using PLA plastic, uh, I, I don't put glue down. I put this this tape down. I'll show you the tape in front of the phone. It's just regular blue painter's tape. I bought it at Walmart. I like to be really careful when I put the tape down so that there's no gaps in between it. Uh, the print really sticks to this tape. In fact, sometimes it's hard to actually get the print out. And the, the tape usually only lasts for one print. I don't care, it's cheap. So we're just going to let this print away. Uh, let's see how it turns out. It's 
kind of an hour left. Looks like the printer's behaving from the fix. The, the problem I had with this printer was is when the print head was going back and forth, he was making this horrible screeching noise. And I'm not even really sure what caused it. I think something got... Uh, I think something got bent. I don't know. I'm making a lure. Top water lure. Printing it in, in green PLA plastic, which is pretty tough plastic. Uh, you could almost throw this thing against the wall and it's not going to work. Here's what it's going to look like when it's done. Like I said, this is one I made from my other machine. This is made out of ABS. caught some fish off of it. Now I'm making a green one. Let's uh, see, I have it on fast. I call this lure the spork. I don't know why. I named it after my cat. <laughs> I have a cat named Spork. She was abandoned when she was three weeks old, so I can't do it. Those of you that don't know um, where the 3D printer starts off, the, the base layers are printed slower. You can see it. Uh, I may have the printer set too fast. It looks like that uh, the print head is shaking a little bit as it goes back and forth. I don't know. I set it on fast because I didn't want it to uh, end up being a four hour print. Plus since I just fixed it I wanted to make sure that, you know, the printer was actually functioning well. I wanted to to sit through one whole print, which like I said before, I usually don't sit through the whole print and watch it. I usually make sure it starts good, and then after I'm convinced it started good, I come back and uh, check it every once in a while just to make sure nothing funny happened. But seeing as how I just fixed it, I, I, I didn't want to make a print and then go to bed and then have this thing do something weird while I'm sleeping. Like I said, the, the printer itself has 1,003 print hours on it. After 1,003 hours of printing, you know, something's bound to go wrong, but like I said, 1,003 hours out of something before it really kind of bit the dust or had a major malfunction is, is, is pretty good by my standards. I, I'm not really familiar with other 3D printers. I'm really only fairly intimately knowledgeable about the XYZ printers, so I don't know what other printers do, like what their uh, 
uh, reliability uh, factors are, like how long they, they run before something starts to go wrong or what, what kind of problems they, they might have, you know, from the beginning. I, I only know one other person at 3D Prints. Uh, she's got an Ender. I'm not sure which model. I'm not familiar with Ender at all. Uh, I was going to say, the other thing I like about the, uh, the other thing I like about the, um, XYZ 3D printers is, is uh, they're a little bit more affordable. Yes, you get up some control. Yes, you do have to buy their filament. But as I said before, there's a lot of figuring out you don't have to do. If, if you want a printer, that you're pretty much going to be able to just turn on and most likely print without having any major malfunctions right out of the box. Particularly this, the one that I'm using now, it's a junior. It's the one with the orange sides. I gotta get a cord for my phone, it only has 20%. I'm streaming off of my phone uh, since I don't have a thousand subscribers, I can't live stream remotely unless I use, I'm using Prism to live stream to my YouTube account. And what I actually like to do is, um, as a continuation of letting you guys watch me make this, I, I'd like to do a live stream where I actually use the lure that I, that I made to see how well it does. The computer I'm using to run both of my printers is a little bit older and slower. Um, it's quite a few years old, but it does the job. I don't really want to invest in, a, in another computer right now. I hope everyone's staying safe from COVID. So far, I've, knock on wood, I've avoided the COVID bug. I haven't been able to do much because about a month ago I broke my wrist. So I've pretty much just been sitting on YouTube watching other people fish live. And finally decided, well, maybe I'll try doing a live stream myself and see how it goes. I, I might start doing that more often just to do that as opposed to posting videos. Now you can see the print a little bit better slowly stacking it up layer by layer. Uh, the nozzle temperature is around 200 degrees. I'm not sure how many layers this print has. I think the new software tells me. No, I guess not. I was just taking a look at the uh, the new interface with XYZ because, like I said, I uh, I haven't used this printer in a long time. I'm gonna plug my phone in here. Sorry for shaking the camera. There we go. But I did get a total of five viewers at once. That's not bad for a first live stream, I suppose. I hope it's not glitchy. The first live stream test I did was a little bit glitchy. It doesn't look like it's being glitchy, because I, I have it up on my, my screen. But now you can actually see the print a little bit better. It, it, it's sometimes even and on the, on the right side it's pulling up just a little bit but that's fine 
sometimes even with the tape you have to put glue down as you try to avoid that because it's really hard to get I noticed with this PLA sometimes it's really hard to actually get the print off of the print bed and the last thing I want to do is break the print bed or uh, bend something that's in there but I usually use a spatula or a uh, towel knife to get it out you can print with a brim uh, what a brim is is the thin layer that's put down first around the object that you're printing and it actually helps hold the edges down uh, it helps the print actually stick to the print bed especially around the edge of the print uh, you're printing something small because a lot of times if you print something small it might get knocked off the print bed no matter how uh, much glue you put down I set it. Oh, and now it's glitching. Oh well. What are you gonna do? <laughs> it keeps freezing. But the things you can actually make with a 3D printer are pretty limitless. More often times than not, if you get on Thingiverse or another file sharing website, you can find the file that you want already. You don't even have to 3D CAD. Now, I taught myself how to 3D CAD. Uh, there's an online program, it's web based, uh, called Tinkercad. Uh, if you've been around 3D printing more than five minutes, you know what Tinkercad is most likely. Uh, I designed this with Tinkercad. Um, I'm not too good with some of the other 3D rendering programs, but Tinkercad is, is, is pretty much almost drop and drag. You know, it doesn't really take all that much effort to learn how to use it. I, I always say, uh, again but I think it's doing it because it's going too fast. I've never I've never set this printer on its fastest setting before. Like if I do another one of these I'll use my other printer and I'll make something else. But but I have to put some lights in there because you can't you can't really see in there. The longest you can leave the light on for this printer is six minutes. But what I ended up doing was is I just went and got some of those strip LEDs with the sticky back and I put them all in there and then I disabled the light that was in the printer. And I've had this printer for about uh, four or five years now. And like I said, I really haven't had any trouble with it whatsoever uh, up until now. So we're about 58 minutes in to the print with 37 minutes left and it's about 61% done. It looks like it's just humming away there doing its thing. Yeah, it does look like it pulled up on the edges. I'm going to let it go and see that. The other thing, about, there's a couple things about 3D printing, and I was talking about the lines before. You are going to see the lines uh, almost no matter what you print. There, there are ways of smoothing it out. 
Um, uh, one of the ways you can smooth it out is sand it, um, which that can be arm numbing to sand it, a print. Uh, if you're using ABS, you can use uh, fingernail polish remover. Uh, there's a bunch of different techniques you can use with fingernail polish remover to, to smooth out a print and make it look like it's shiny, like it's plastic injected. But uh, uh, I've had some people criticize my 3D prints over seeing the lines. Well, it's not, it's not a machine that injects plastic, you know, like a regular lure or a regular plastic, whatever. So you are going to see the lines. It's, it's not a perfect thing. But it, it, it does make quite a few things, and you can use things, you know, like I said, to, to smooth it out. I've seen some people use uh, Bondo, like the body filler on cars. Um, I've seen some people uh, sand it and then use like some kind of putty, and then they sand it some more. Uh, I've tried that. I, I didn't have much success with it. But, so I just kind of gave up uh, and accepted the lines as something that's a part of 3D printing. Now, 3D printer pen, um, to fill in the cracks, because it, it looks like the uh, ends are pulled up more than I really want them to, but just because the ends are pulling up doesn't mean the print isn't savable. That just means you have to do a little bit extra post-production work. So probably what I'll end up doing is, is uh, uh, after I put these together, uh, I'll whip out the 3D pen and cut off a little bit of this filament and fill in the cracks and then I'll have to sand it a little bit. And I was actually gonna try an experiment, and I might do it with this lure, is uh, I, I was gonna try coating it in uh, fiberglass resin to see if I could get it shinier and see how that reacts. Uh, the next time I do this, I'll probably slow the printer down, but I'll uh, come in partway into the print. I don't think anyone's going to want to watch this thing go for six hours. There might be some people that do. Now, the, uh, the info percentage on this one I made it a little bit higher than I did on this original lure. The infill uh, and the original lure I printed is, I think, 20%. I think I put this at 25. Uh, if you're not familiar with what infill percentage is, is uh, obviously the inside of this thing is, is hollow. but it needs a little bit of support on the inside, so you have infill, and that's what's what's in the center of it. You can't quite see it, but there is a honeycomb pattern on the inside, and with some printers like this one, you can choose the different styles of, of infill and what's in the center of it. And like I said before, uh, I prefer honeycomb. Uh, the other, the other thing I was going to say about the corners, or I was going to say something about the corners pointing up. Uh, the bottom of the print gets cooler as time goes on, and you don't use a heated print bed with PLA. You do with ABS, and that's one of the things that helps it stick to the print bed is the heat. So as that, as those bottom layers are cooling, uh, sometimes they contract. And, and that's where maybe you'd, you'd either want to try to put some glue down 
uh, or use a broom. Uh, the next time I, I print one of these, I'll probably just put some glue down and see if that helps. Uh, even though this printer is, is geared towards more simple use, there is a lot of trial and error with 3D printing. So, um, you know, if you do end up getting one, one of these in particular, uh, you know, if you hit a bump, it just means that you have to fiddle with it a little bit. I, I have a whole box of failed prints. For one reason or another, I, I you know, uh, had a pro I either had a problem with the print, it wouldn't stick, or it wouldn't print it the way I wanted it to print it, or, uh, you know, it, it was beyond the machine's capabilities to print it. These machines do have capabilities. They, they are uh, capable of quite a bit, but but every machine has its, has its limits as to what it's going to do. And, and, and after using this thing for four or five years, I, I kind of sort of know what its limitations are. I know, I know what you'll learn over time what we can get away with. And what we can. I've, I've ended up printing some really nice things. If, if you go to my Thingiverse page, Dr. Frankenstein, uh, you'll see a lot of the things that I've printed. And I've done a couple videos on 3D printing, uh, lures, I printed some War Robots. I used to play this game called War Robots, and I printed a couple of the mechs from War Robots, which those turned out really nice. And, and those prints, I, I get a lot of people messaging me asking me to do other robots to print them, or if they if, if they can buy them. I can't, I can't sell them because it's not my content. And uh, those prints were actually very difficult to do, simply because I was taking a flat graphic uh, or taking a flat object and, and turning it into a 3D object, which was kind of hard. So those all have to be put into a converter. And then, it, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, is those War Robots files in the next that I printed, the files originally were not 3D printer friendly. So I had a hard time printing those, those more robots, but they are one of some of my most watched videos. But I don't play that game anymore, so I'm not really too terribly interested in printing any more robots anyway. Well, that's printing. I'll show you another lure I made. I'll just hold it in front of the camera. I'm streaming off my phone and I don't want to move it. Here's another lure that I made. This is a paddle tail lure. Uh, this lure was actually originally designed uh, for rivers and it is a knockoff lure. Somebody posted this on Thingiverse and I bought one of these paddle tails but they're kind of expensive. And when I saw this on uh, Thingiverse, I decided to print it. It's printed in ABS. It does have the uh, stainless steel fittings. It needs to be sanded a little bit uh, because when I glued it together, the tail didn't go together perfectly. But it is a knockoff. And I haven't tried it in the water yet. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. Here, I don't know if you can hear that, it's got a rattle in it. And yeah, this has two BBs in it for weight, but I accidentally put the rattle in the wrong compartment. So that actually may cause the lure to act funny. Now, uh, with the 3D prints, uh, you can sand them. Uh, you can file on them, uh, you can use a Dremel motor tool on them, uh, you can drill the plastic, uh, I've, I've drilled plastic. I think what I did with this original one that I made, I think 
the uh, stainless steel cotter pins would not fit in the holes the way I wanted. So I think I ended up drilling the holes out a little bit. Um, of course, with a Dremel, you got to be kind of careful that you don't grind a hole in it. But I have used all those things on there, mostly sandpaper and files. You can file it smooth, but if you're thinking about getting a 3D printer and you end up getting one, don't kill yourself over trying to make it too smooth. Because as I said before, uh, the, the layers are just a part of what 3D printing is. And, and after a while, it's, it's not a big deal. I don't think I have any other lures handy that I've 3D printed. Uh, the first two lures I made, uh, I feel like they were... Uh, why is my phone not charging? Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I gotta make sure my phone is... Otherwise, I'll... It's not charging for some reason. I don't know why. We'll try a different cord. sure why. Well, I have 23 minutes left on the print. Hopefully it, uh, my phone lasts for 23 minutes. I'm not sure why uh, it's doing that. Let's do this. I'm going to cut off the lights for a second. Let's try doing this. Cut the lights for a second. Hopefully you can still see it. Maybe it's my power strip, I don't know. No, the phone's not charging. I don't know why. something else I 3D printed. There's a building. We're done. It's not finished. But this is for my train layout. It's supposed to be a coffee shop. But it's not going to be a coffee shop because I got a Starbucks now. Yes, Starbucks even comes to Plasticville. <laughs> So I don't know what I'm going to make this, but I did design this building myself. And I actually designed it uh, uh, off of Thingiverse. You can do some designing on uh, There was this guy that had a, a, a thing for brick. Oh, I just dropped it and broke it. Wow. Oh, well. Well, since it's smaller now, I'll show you the front, because that's the most interesting part anyway. That's the front. This is going to be something. It's got plastic behind the windows. I saved the plastic from other buildings that I buy that are commercially made, and I use that. Thank you. 
board here and see if I can give it to Cherish so my life so it doesn't die. If it does, I'm sorry. Thanks for everyone who watched. I appreciate it. Never done this before, so it's a learning curve for me. Now it's not full, I got a message saying 20%, and then I plugged it in and it said 10%. So I don't, I don't know. I'm really good with technology sometimes. That's why I have a printer like this. She was glitching a little bit. Well, I'm not really happy with the way the ends are pulling up, but it can work with it. Like I said, this is, 3D printing is, is definitely trialing. I know. Patience and willingness to troubleshoot a little bit. This might drive you crazy. Looks like we have about 16 minutes left on the print. Now my other printer, because it has a heat, uh, there's a cooldown period. But with this printer, as soon as the print is done, you can take it out. Looks like the looks like the the right end of the half of the print in the front is, is pulling up a lot, and that really can affect actually the way the print turns out. So I might end up rejecting this one, but we'll see. 
the, the right end of the print, the, the half in front, the top of it looks really sloppy. That's why I mentioned you can file this plastic and you can sand it because sometimes even if a print doesn't turn out very well, it's saveable. That, that just means you're, you you got to throw more into post-production, more elbow grease for sanding. What happens is, is when the print actually pulls up, it actually makes the upper layers of the print thinner. I think I can actually see the print head tilting back a little bit. And that's that's the reason why the the right upper end of that print is, is turning out sloppy. You can't really see it on camera, but the back end of, of the second half is turning out better than the, than the front half. You can actually see the print head bouncing a little bit because as that plastic dries, or I should say as it cools, to the right, you'll see it bounce up a little bit. It's doing it on the back one a little bit too, but not as bad. Uh, one big thing that can have an effect on your 3D prints is the way it's oriented on the bed. I've, I've had situations where I've printed something like this, where it's facing this way, and all I do is turn it pointing the other way. And the print actually turns out better. Those are some of the different things you can try to get a print to turn out. You can, you can try printing at a, at a different layer height. Uh, I should say layer thickness. Uh, you can try turning the orientation of the print. Um, you can try glue. You can try a, a, a brim. A brim probably would help this. Uh, or maybe even less infill may have helped. Maybe, maybe, uh, you see as, as speed, as the speed of the print increases, uh, the machine's going to make the plastic at a higher temperature. So maybe printing it slow, that could be it too. It, it, it's going to increase, the at a higher temperature, it's going to increase the feed rate, and it's going to uh, increase the temperature of the plastic. And that could, that could have an effect. If the plastic, if you print at a slower speed and the plastic doesn't get as hot, it, it, it may have a tendency to not warp as much as it has on uh, this time around. But it looks like you have about nine minutes left. It takes a while around here for the top water bite to start up for the bass. As soon as the ice goes away the, and the water gets to about 50 degrees, uh, that's right before bass spawn. And that's when they, they really fire up. Because the first thing on their mind is eating. And 
as the water warms up and, and the fish gain some cover, like weeds and lily pads, they hide in the weeds, and that's, that's when the top water bite really goes. It's really pulling up on the edges. I, I'm wondering if the nozzle is actually hitting the cool plastic, and that's why it's bouncing a little bit. I think if I do another one of these, and I probably will because I really love topwater lures, I'll probably do thicker layers, probably do it at the thickest layer, and uh, I'll probably slow the, the speed of the print down. Now I used uh, the settings for this printer as far as a layer height and the speed that I did when I printed it with the other printer and, and that might be the problem. seven minutes. Well, if my phone dies, because I'm not sure if it's charging or not, thank you for everyone watching in advance. first couple lures I made, I used uh, for the fittings, the hardware on them, instead of using uh, stainless steel cotter pins, I used that green wire that they use for floral arrangements. I thought that with the green coating on them, they wouldn't rust, and I was wrong. So I've, I've retired those lures. I don't use them. I have them in a box somewhere around here, I'm not sure where. In one of my, one of my spare boxes. I just, when, when something like that happens, when a print fails, or uh, uh, let's just say the, you know, in the case of a green wire rusting, uh, I save all those prints uh, in case I want to go back and look at them and try to figure out what I did wrong. I'm just 
taking a closer look here. Yeah, the back of the lure turned out really funny on the one half because it's pulling out. I just told you to see my face on there. I like to stick my face in there and check the print real close. I was planning on doing some fishing videos. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. There's there's so many fishing channels on YouTube right now. I but I have had a lot of people ask me what do I use to fish with, and uh, I had enough people ask where I'm just I'm just gonna say, well, watch it on YouTube. <laughs> I have to keep repeating myself. We're down to four minutes. Four minutes left. 95% done, and we're about an hour and 31 minutes in. Now, I can't remember the name of the website, but I'm sure if you Google it, you'd be able to find it really easy. There is a website out there where you can actually design your own lure, and uh, they will print the lure for you. And I think you can even ask them to paint it. So if you, if you wanted to make a custom lure and you don't have access to a 3D printer, that's a good way of doing it. I, I know most libraries have 3D printers. That's actually how I started with 3D printing. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy a 3D printer. Um, I bought this printer about five years ago. It was 300 bucks. Uh, that's a pretty hefty investment. Um, so what I what I found out was is that the library near me actually had 3D printers and for a fee, uh, based off the weight, uh, they would go 3D print for you. And, and what you do is you email them the file, and they will print it for you. And I had pretty good success with that. And after doing it about two or three times. I just decided I was going to go ahead and just buy one on my own. So I, I, I had some things 3D printed uh, for my train set. After watching a, bu a bunch of videos on, on YouTube, uh, I just decided I wanted one, and then it was just a matter of choosing which one I wanted. And, and I opted for this one, which seemed to be the simplest to use. Uh, the only, I, I think, the only complaint I really with the XYZ. It's two pretty small complaints. I, I called their tech support, which was nothing short of hell, talking to them. And when you buy the printer, they give you a roll of filament, or at least they make you think you get a roll of filament. But it's not a full roll, it's like a quarter roll. So you, you can't print too much off a quarter roll. You know. So if you do, if you do buy one of these, I know they have a deal going now for 350 bucks, you get 14 rolls of filament, which is a lot of filament. 
and you get the printer for free. And that's actually how I got my other printer. I, I wanted a second one so I could try other plastic and so I could print bigger things. So I got that and uh, that turned out pretty well. That was a couple years ago and I still have boxes of filament that I haven't even opened yet. So, and, and the machine that I'm using now, I went on a massive 3D printing binge. I, I printed anything and everything and, and that's what I love about these machines is, is you can make, you know, just about anything. The door handle on my sliding, my screen sliding door broke. It got on Tinkercad, I designed one, and that was five years ago, and it still works. There's lots of interesting things you can print. This has about two minutes left. Hopefully my battery holds out. At least you need to get the print out and show you. I really wanted to print this in yellow, not green. I have a roll of yellow, but it's tangled, and I have to untangle it. I'm not, I, I can't imagine how it got tangled. Because it's been sitting in a box for the last, I think it's been about a year since I've used this printer. What happened was, is I thought I had a problem with it, so I started taking it apart. And uh, I got busy with other things, so I didn't put it back together. I finally decided to, to put it back together a little while ago and get it going. But I have to give my uh, wife a lot of credit for helping me get it going. I, I, I'm just getting over a broken wrist. I slipped about a month ago and broke my left wrist. And uh, I'm, I'm out of the brace and I'm out of the cast. And I'm just starting to be able to use it. But she did all the, the pushing and pulling of this thing around because I kept having to turn it. And it's side and on its back and on its front to get it put back together again. And there's a couple screws I had to put back in when I put it together where I had to contort my hand. So she did that for me. So I pretty much give her credit. Got to give him credit. We got one minute left. Uh, looks like the total build time is going to be an hour and 38 minutes. Not too bad. And despite the fact that the print is not turning out the way I want it to, because it's pulling up, I like the pattern that the honeycomb infill is leaving. The other thing I was going to mention about this particular printer is uh, it's got an SD card in it. You, you can't see it, it's just out of the picture. You, you can actually take that SD card out and load files onto it and pr actually print with this thing without it being hooked up to a computer. That was one of the other things I liked about it because when I originally bought it, I wasn't sure if I had room for it by my PC. So I actually don't need the PC to run this thing. I've tried it a couple times. I gotta get those files off the card. But when I ran a test print on this thing this morning, uh, I ran a test print of one of the files I loaded on it, and it, so that's, that's kind of another advantage. If, you, if you're living in an apartment or cramped for space, 
and you can't get it near your computer. It don't have to be in your be near your computer. You know, or if you don't like the, you know, like let's say you, you have your computer in your bedroom and you don't want to have to deal with the noise of a 3D printer. This one's a little bit quieter because it is in a box. It's, it's been a little bit noisier on the live stream because I have the front flipped open so you can see better. Now my other printer is fairly noisy. But this one's rather quiet. Sometimes that fan and the, the cooling fan in the back makes a buzzing noise. The, uh, the other thing I was thinking of is, is, is with that print pulling up like that, uh, I have a setup in my basement. Uh, my basement's rather cold. Um, it's possible that having the door open so you guys can see better uh, is actually affecting the rate in which the plastic is cooling. And that's one of the little quirks to 3D printing. You, you, you either learn on your own or you learn by cruising forums. Now, a lot of what I know about 3D printing, I had to, you know, trial and error on my own. But that very well could be the reason. I'd always be interested in running this print with the front door shut just to see, if it, in the same settings, just to see if it comes out differently, but I don't need two of these green. Of course, I could always paint it. I do, I do plan on trying to make a yellow one as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, uh, I get that other roll untangled. And as, as far as lure color and fishing goes, yeah, it does make a difference. It can. I've seen situations where I've thrown the same, oh, it's done. Yeah, that first one came out kind of nasty, but I can work with it. Another lure, yay, as if I don't already have enough. I fish under the philosophy that you can never have too many lures. Even though I mostly fish ponds, you can never have too much, too many lures. There we go, there's the wonderful chirp. I'm going to use this tile knife to get it out. It should come out pretty easy, and it does. That's because it's warped. Let's take a close look here. Yeah, it came out really warped. See this flat part right here. This so it's not flat right there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. That little flat part right there. And this is what the warping cost. You can see it's not, it's gonna take me quite a bit of effort to get this to be flat. But I think if I sand it, I can get it flat. It, it may be unrecoverable, I don't know. Uh, there's other tricks you can do to fix these. Situations like this, you can use a, um, a heat gun You can use a, um, you're a squeaker. My son's in the chat calling me a squeaker as a joke. It's, it's all in good fun. He, anyway, you can use a heat, the hair dryer, um, on a disc sander 
to get it more flat. I'm not sure if you can see the gap, but that's really bad. This this print didn't didn't uh, turn out nearly as well as I wanted to, but I'm going to try to rescue it. Uh, like I said, it does. You can see the honeycomb pattern in there. I don't know if you can see it with the light. Uh, that honeycomb pattern is kind of cool for a lure. That's that's an unintentional side product, but I think I ran the print too fast. You can see little globs. Like I said, the 3D prints don't come out, always come out perfect. And this is a really good example of one that did not come out perfect, but it's uh, good enough for me to want to work with. I'm going to have to work with it a lot, but I'll see if I can rescue it. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fix this on a live stream. But uh, as soon as I get it fixed, or I should say as soon as I get it finished, and as soon as I get it fixed up uh, with hooks on it and everything like that, I'll, I'll either do a live stream of me fishing with it, or I'll do a video of me fishing with it, and I'll post that to let you know the results. I, I already know it's going to catch fish because this one does. Um, that's if they want the color green. But uh, if I if I can't rescue it, I'm going to print try printing another one and changing the settings. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching my first legit live stream. Uh, I appreciate all my subscribers. I appreciate everyone uh, who's watching and uh, all the, the nice comments uh, people have made about my videos over the years. I appreciate. Here's, here's the cover. This is what it's like when it's closed. It's got this right here so it would block the view. And then, of course, I love Mystery Science Theater 3000, so I had to have the boys watching everything that prints. But anyway, thanks again, guys, for watching. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I'll stay safe and have a good day.